Go Joey's, shove. Go ahead, uh oh, somebody's got to be first. Go ahead, Andrew. Um, you always talk about you know writing in your uh, your journal through the course of the season after uh, after your call on Saturday. What, what was the what was the the entry into the into the journal after your uh, call for the two point conversion? Anything out of the ordinary? Or? No, not out of the ordinary. I think we should come up with a name for this football team this year after after that uh, after that game last week. I thought a couple of different names for it. One would be cardiac toppers. <laughs> we make everything interesting. Does that win more emotional than the, than the Lafayette game just now, just because of the way it is? Yeah, I think whenever you're in a close ball game like that, um, a lot more emotion goes into it, and especially the way that game went. You know, um, there at the end, you thought they were going to punt the ball. We only had a few seconds. 40, 50 seconds left in that game and no timeouts. And you just never knew what was going to happen. You had a chance, but it wasn't a good chance, you know. And um, I'm sure a lot of people thought, well, here they go again. And gave up on us. And said the beauty of, of that game was no one on our sideline gave up. You know, even even when they were punt, getting ready to punt the ball, you heard guys on the sideline, you got to believe, you know, we're going to win this ball game. We're gonna, constantly hurt, and that's something we hadn't had all year, you know, especially when things got bad for us, you know, but our, our guys took a different approach, you know, and then the football gods came alive again, you know, true believer, there was God, football gods out there, you know, and they say, here's a young football team who's been working hard all year long, have some really close ball games, and I'm going to make this ball go with this punter's head quick, but I'm not going to let them scoop and score. I'm still going to make them work and see if they really want to win this ball game, man. And I got to show that they work. And I told our guys during the week that um, um, our team was ready to win. I told them we were ready to win. We just had to go out and do it. And football guys put in a situation to see if we really were ready. And our guys did it. 25 weeks ago when you guys were in the Miami, that F FIU game, it was, you guys had the ball on their side of the 50 with a minute or so to go wherever it was and had a pass on the end zone to drop it. I think you said that. When we become a winning team, we make that place. You know, five weeks ago, does this team make that play that they made? You know, all the plays they had to make on Saturday to win the game. Uh, no, um, and again, that was part of the whole learning process I've been talking about all year. Our team just learning as we go, and, and you're exactly right. Early in the year, we wouldn't, you know, and, and even just last week, you know, we wouldn't do it. And our guys have been learning, and, and we constantly talk about someone stepping up and making plays, and, and those guys did it. They were so confident going to the game. You know, even the young receivers were like, Coach, we're going we're gonna to show up. You know, we're going to make plays. And, and, and they did that, especially at the end. And more importantly, those guys just played with a lot of confidence and played instinctively. You know, it wasn't out there like robots just running around. And, and they made the play that, that, that we needed, especially when they counted. And that's something we hadn't done around here. And, and we told our team at the beginning of the week, that's the only thing we're missing is being able to come from behind and win a ball game. Pretty much every game we're going to play, we're going to be in those situations. So we got to learn to do it, and we did it. Do those, those guys learn more about themselves after a win like that than after the one where you just left him where you blew their doors off? You guys always talk about overcoming adversity. There wasn't a whole lot of adversity in that one. It was right. just kind of a route. Did they learn more about how to handle themselves and how to get things done in the game? No, no doubt about it. Uh, Lafayette was that part was easy. Like I said, when you're up like that, it's easy to, um, to play and play with relax, you know. And, when those situations, when you get in those adverse situations, it's when it's hard. You know, it's hard to stay focused. It's hard to, you know, you get nervous, especially with our team and where we've been. You know, it's easily go back to, oh, man, here we go. You know, and throw it guys, we just got to get out of that. You know, we preached that. We talked about it all year. So it's going to come a time where we're going to say, okay, enough is enough. Let's get out of that and do it. And they were able to do it in that game. And, and that's what we needed. You know, I told our guys what I, what I wanted was I wanted guys to come up to us come up to me and say, Coach, give me the ball when it's tough. You know, rather than just being quiet and not asking for it. But when we down and the game get tough, I want guys saying, Coach, give me the ball. And sure enough, I had about 100 guys going that ball on Saturday. And, and that was a great feeling for me. You know, uh, going for two wasn't, you know, it wasn't a second thought. You know, because all the guys wanted it. You know, they believed in it. They wanted it. And that's what I wanted for my football team. And it was good to see that they're starting to do those things. We talk all, every week about the little things or how one little thing, no matter when it is, can impact the outcome of the game. Do you marvel at all at the, at the fact that, I mean, 
you guys had had to call a timeout for anything, no matter how small it was, you, you probably don't get the ball back in position to win a ball game. Exactly right. That's why I say the football guys, there are football guys out there because uh, <coughs> Coach Bourne wanted to use the timeout. You know, if they're towards the end of that fourth quarter when they were driving to get their game winning touchdown, our defense looked really tired. You know, he's like, Coach, we might have to use this touchdown. We might have to use this timeout. I was like, Coach, I hope we don't. We're going to need it. You know, and sure enough, the football guy didn't allow me to use a timeout then and save it for us. And it worked out perfectly for us. I know we talked a little bit about it on Saturday after the game, uh, but that that drive there at the end, uh, what and just the way it ended up, what does that do for, uh, how big was that for K1? Just, you know, he made the fourth down you know, conversion there on, uh, and then obviously throws the touchdown to Willie and just managing, you know, the, the offense there at the end. Uh, is that something that he needed? Yeah, I mean, it's to show what he's capable of doing. You know, it's just, again, it's a process. It's a process for him. Um, he's still learning. He's still learning how to play the position, you know. And there's a sack in the offense that he's trying to learn. He hadn't played a lot of quarterback throughout his year uh, playing football. And, and no one has asked him to do the thing we're asking him to do now. And so he's learning every single week, and he's getting better every single week. And he's showing the plays that he can make. Those plays he made uh, toward the end of the game was big time. You know, that was what college D1 football players do. And, you know, and he was a big part of it, you know, driving down. I'll tell you the best thing about it is, you know, he was he was up. He was what you wanted in the quarterback, especially on the sideline. You know, he, he was complimenting and building everyone else up, you know, and, and he showed that um, he was ready. He, he wanted to make that play, and, and he did it. You know, that was the good thing about it. And the good thing about that kid is no matter how much you guys put the pressure on him to, to do this or – Bring him, try to bring him down. He's not letting it rattle. You know, he's come back and working. He don't let in that bottom. That's and that's that's great when you have a guy that can do that at that position because it's not hard to do, especially being a teenager. You know, and everything is put on you. You know, and it's a team sport. And, and but he handled it well. You know, and haven't been mad at anyone. And just say, hey, coach, that motivation for me is people telling me what I cannot be. So that's big time. You know, so. Keep letting them take you off. We'll be all right. Is that something that, they, I mean, it seems like you've talked with them a little bit about that. Is, I mean, you said Saturday that you hope people get off his back, at, you know, now, and, and you've been defending him all season when, you know, there's been doubters. I mean, um, how much has that been talked about between you guys, and how much is that, I mean, you make, I mean, you get the impression that it hasn't really affected him that much at all. Oh, well, I keep assuring, reassuring him that it's going to be okay. And, and, uh, we as coaches, we want to watch film every day. We see it. We want to watch the game. Those ones making those comments on seeing the game and not seeing the whole picture, not seeing when the entire um, execution is not working, you know. So they're going to make those comments, you know. That's just the reality of it all. They're going to do that. So there's no need to get down and, and be ticked off about it all. And just, you're just in a bad situation where you you in a program that's been down and, and hadn't won in a while. And everyone will point the fame to someone and it's going to go to the quarterback, you know? Not really realizing that it's not just the quarterback have to do well. Everybody else has to do their jobs too, you know. And, and everybody do their job. They want to look good. She would look good. The whole line look good. Running back, everyone. And, and that's just part of it, you know. And I understand that, you know. So that's why I don't get down. And it do bother me when people are down on them and, and bring them down because he's a teenager is trying his best and working his tail off. And he's learning, you know. And we want him to be Joe Montana right now. And, He's not, you know, he's learned his offense and he's getting better, you know, in his offense. And we're getting better in the offense. Our receivers, you know, starting to learn how to run routes and starting to learn how to get in, get open, you know. And that's, again, a part of the process. Those young guys, well, they don't understand. Some of these guys just played high school ball last year. Didn't have to do any of these things, and we're asking them to do a lot. So um, I, I'm seeing the progress every week in all of our guys, you know, not just K-1, but all of them. Um, I think the kid's special. I think the kid have something that um, that can really help his football team down the road. Do you feel like he's more comfortable when, when you guys as a staff say to him that you don't need to worry about it? This isn't going to be. You've said it before in the past couple of years anyway when a coach said that guy had the job two weeks later he didn't, and now you guys it seems like you, you met what you said. How much how important is it that he knows that you're really? Do you mean when you say he's not going anywhere unless it becomes a disaster? <clears throat> right, right. It's, I think it's especially for that position. That position is just different from any other position on the field. And that guy's got to have confidence that um, 
coaching staff and the players are, are behind him, you know, and, and if, he, if you lose that, then you don't stand a chance uh, playing that position. You have a lot of things going and going on during, during the game, and um, you have guys trying to kill you out there, and, and if you're not confident in everyone else or believe like everyone else has confidence in you, then you're not going to be successful. And um, Again, it's, it's big. It's important to him because he's trying to learn a new offense, you know, do the things we're asking to do, but he's not quite there yet. And um, he's trying to do it with the pressure of um, everyone wanting him to be the savior, you know. And you know, we need right now. We're not where we need to be in a program. In our program where one guy is just going to be the savior for us. You know, we need everyone to step up and be that savior. And, and you know, he wants to be. I mean, he's trying every single day to be that. It's just you know, if once he we get comfortable. On a quarterback and our receivers being on the same page and understanding the offense in and out, um, I think you'll see uh, even a lot more production from from that group. Should there be less pressure now? I mean, you've, you've won two games I and mean, you've won a home game, but I mean, you've won two games. He's shown that he can lead your team back when they're down late. Should there be less pressure uh, on him? Uh, I think shouldn't be any pressure on him anyway. You know, you just play ball. You don't worry about what everyone else thinks of you. Play ball and do what we actually do. There's no pressure. You know, um, we're at the bottom and working our way up. We're climbing, you know, and, and don't worry about any pressure or anyone else saying. Uh, at the end of the day, Coach Tiger's got to make a decision on what he wants, what he thinks is best for his football program. And that's why they hired Coach Tiger to be the head coach. So don't worry about what everyone else has to say. You know, as long as I watch a film and I see the progression that we need and see we're moving in the right direction, we're going to continue to stay the course. You know, um, again, the other way doesn't work. You know, and, you need consistency, especially at that position. And, and we said we're, we're getting it, and, and, and he's coming. You know, and, and not I say just not just him. Our young receivers are coming too, and, and we're getting better every week. This is the second time you you all have won games on the road, and now you go and you play at home. How have things changed since the North, the North Texas loss? Um, here to play. I would say I mean we just we just keep continue to work. You know, our guys showing up, continue to work, continue to believe in each other, and, and said we're just, you know, we got to play our A game and go out and execute offensively and defensively to keep doing what they're doing. You know, we're not completely just changing anything because uh, it didn't result in wins. Um, you know, we're even in all these ball games we lost, we, we've seen progress in some aspect of our program, and and, and that's adding up. If you can remember back back when. Uh, Coach Nellenberger said after that game about the winning muscle and, and building that. Um, it's kind of what we did last week. You know, we just building that winning muscle. And then the stronger and stronger that get, the uh, more wins we're going to get. You know, I think that's what I took from him when he said that and made that comment. You know, just strengthening that winning muscle. And, and our guy's been doing that all year. And, you know, and it hadn't completely got strong enough to just get those wins all the time, but it's, it's been getting strong and putting us in a position of where we can get those wins, which it has in the last few balls.